Hi everyone, welcome back to the Beginner Guide to Gyaru video series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the history of Gyaru. Gyaru, which is the Japanese word for gal, is a style that began as a way to rebel against Japanese beauty standards. Gyaru, as we know it today, is a drastic difference to its humble beginnings. In the mid-1990s, the style of Gyaru was born. The style began as a way to reject the Japanese beauty standards of pale skin, dark hair, and natural makeup. The early look consisted of tan skin, bleach hair, and white makeup around the eyes. The original style was oftentimes called kogao. The word kogao comes from the Japanese phrase kokosei gyaru, meaning high school gal. Most kogals were in high school and easily recognized by their loose socks and shortened skirts. Outside of school, you would oftentimes see kogals wearing short skirts and tall chunky platform boots, which was a look popularized by Japanese pop star Namie Amuro. Kogals would oftentimes wear tropical inspired outfits featuring patterns with hibiscus and fruits. Many components of this early look carried on throughout the years and continues to be popular today such as tan skinned, bleach hair, and long nails. A main part of the ghetto style originated in the rebellious attitude. These girls were not at all afraid of being different, being loud, and sticking out from the norm. From the start, ghetto were seen as promiscuous and dirty, which is a stereotype that has carried on throughout the years. Ghetto have the mindset in which they do not care what others think of them. This style's rebellious nature started with that attitude. Along with the attitude, there became a ghetto culture. Ghetto developed their own slang, which, like the style, evolved over time. A notable feature of gyaru culture is the popularity of gyaru circles. A gyaru circle is a very complex system, but to give you a brief explanation, it is a group of gyaru who will host events and meet up regularly. There are two types of gyaru circles. Nagosa, which are circles that only meet up to hang out very casually, and Ivesa, which are circles that meet up to plan and host events. Parapara was a huge part of gyaru culture for many years. Parapara is a style of synchronized dancing that was accompanied by Eurobeat music. Parapara was the signature pastime of kogals as well as gals throughout the years. More recently it has become out of date, but some gyaru still do dance parapara. A pretty significant part of gyaru culture is the style of gyaru-o. Gyaru-o is the male equivalent of gyaru. The sub-styles of gyaru-o range just as much as with gyaru. One thing to mention is that gyaru made their territory, so to speak, in Shibuya. Shibuya is the main place where you are likely to see gyaru. The Shibuya 109 is a shopping mall that, although it has been around since the 1970s, has since become a mecca for gyaru brands. Toward the later end of the 1990s, Ganguro was quickly replacing the kogao look. Ganguro is characterized by a much deeper tan as well as white makeup on the lips and eyes. The hair was of course bleached and from time to time you would see silver hair. This is also the time when eyelashes were added to the gyaru look. Ganguro's existence is often credited to the gal Puriteri. She was oftentimes featured in the gyaru magazine Egg. Egg magazine was first published in 1995 and has since ceased publication. It was one of the most popular gyaru magazines in circulation. Manba was the next style to come into existence. Manbas were heavily tanned and wore white makeup on their eyes, lips, and cheeks. Oftentimes, stickers were added on the cheeks. Some of these gals wore circle lenses, but it was not a necessity. Manba's hair were always super colorful. Not all of these gyaru had colored hair, but many did or would keep it bleached. Manbas had a massive love for all things tropical and beachy. Hibiscus prints became incredibly popular, which is likely why the brand Alba Rosa had such huge success. Alba Rosa is the most beloved brand of Mambas. Oftentimes, you would see Mamba wearing floral lace as necklaces and bracelets. By this time, the chunky boots that Kogals and Gangoros wore were long gone. The popular Mamba of the time was the gal Katan. She was oftentimes on the pages of Egg Magazine. She sported all the popular trends of the time, including a short-lived style called Romanda, as well as Kigurimin. Romanba was an attempt of mixing the more romantic and sweet style with the rough look of Mamba. Kigurimin was a Mamba style of wearing oversized animal character PJs called Kigurimi. Needless to say, these micro styles quickly died out. Alongside Mamba, there was a gyaru o style called Sentagai, which was referring to Center Street in Shibuya. Sentagais became a counterpart to styles like Mamba and Yamamba. Sentagais wore loads of Alba Rosa, tanned their skin, dyed their hair a natural color, as well as applied white makeup to their faces, and ended up having a very similar appearance to their female counterparts. As Manba faded away, two styles came into existence, Yamanba and Banba. Yamanba was yet another style added to the spectrum of Gyaru. The word Yamanba comes from the Japanese term for mountain hag. As you can probably guess from the name, the style is arguably even more rough than Manba. The tans became darker and the base makeup was often a few shades darker than the rest of the body. The placement of the white makeup remained about the same as Manba, although now the nose stripe was often over the eyebrows and onto the forehead. The eyebrows were often over-exaggerated by drawing the white over where the brows would naturally be, to create an extremely arched brow. The stickers on the face were removed and lower lashes were oftentimes added. The hair became more dramatic and oftentimes more colorful. The hair was oftentimes teased and dyed multiple colors. 
Fan Bao is essentially a toned down version of Manba. The overall look was significantly more subtle than Yamanba and Manba. There were no stickers and the makeup was much more blended. Fanba still wore the signature white around the face, but oftentimes would wear nude lips or pale pinks. A popular Gyaru circle to mention is Angelique. Fanba and Yamanba were the most popular style to wear for Angelique gals. Angelique has been featured in Egg magazine countless times, as well as being on quite a few television appearances. Angelique really held up that Gyaru rebellious attitude. They were not at all afraid to be different or obnoxious. Of course, the age of Manba, Yamanba, and Banba eventually came to an end. The styles eventually became less popular in Gyaru and more toned down looks became preferred. This isn't to say that all Manbas disappeared. There are still a few gals who participate in these more extreme styles. However, in general, these styles have died. Both during the Manba era and after, many sub styles came into existence. Check out the substyle section to get a closer look at some of these styles. From around 2008 to 2011, Gyaru became a very popular fashion. The makeup became more refined and in many cases borderline dolly. The clothes were oftentimes very feminine or with a slight boyish touch. Styles like Amekaji and Himekaji were seen everywhere. Oftentimes people will refer to this as the golden era of Gao. Gao was super popular and during this time Gyaru clothing stores and Gyaru magazines flourished. Magazines that were previously not Gyaru at all suddenly had the most popular gals on every cover. For example, Pop Teen, which is not regularly a Gyaru magazine, was suddenly releasing Gyaru-themed magazines, and even created a short-lived sister magazine, Pop Sister. Tsubasa Masawaka is easily the most popular gal from this time. Her success continued as she launched her own makeup and eyelash brand, Candy Doll and Dolly Wink, respectively. Gyaru of this time had a very easy-going and laid-back look, save for a few more strict styles. At this time, Gao was so easily accessible to the public that many participated in the style. However, around 2012 and 2013, the style began to tone down significantly. Gao slowly stopped tanning and the makeup became lighter and lighter. The popularity steeply dropped and this caused many of the popular Gyaru magazines, including Ageha and Egg, to cease publication. There is a lot of speculation as to why the style toned down, but to be completely honest, the style did not tone down, the magazines did. The magazines that did this, in a way, shaped the industry. The Gyaru brands toned down and in many cases ended up dying or losing its popularity. Brands that have stayed true to their aesthetics such as Mars and Daya are still going strong. With many of the brands towing down, new brands pop up and see this as an opportunity to try to rebrand Gal. Brands like Fig and Viper have tried to call their style of clothing Neo Gal. However, the style couldn't be further from the Gal aesthetic. The only thing that Neo Gal and Gyaru have in common is the word Gal. In reality, Neo-Gal is basically grunge clothing with low-maintenance hair and makeup. By the way, Elisa Ueno, the creator of the style and the brand Fig and Viper, has come out and said that Neo-Gal is not at all related to Gyaru's style. Another possibility to why Gyaru fashion is not as popular anymore is that the style became way too over the top to keep up with easily. Styles like Kuro Gyaru push the limits of Gyaru with extremely decoed nails, over the top hair, and of course, deep tans. However, this type of look is not accessible or realistic for everyone. If you compare this type of Gyaru to Gyaru from the late 2000s, you will see a distinct difference. Gyaru from the late 2000s was a very easy style to do, even without brand. Gyaru now is difficult and expensive to maintain. Now this is not to say that Gyaru style is dying or being washed away at all. Gyaru who truly love the style will always continue to wear the styles regardless of if it is popular or not. The fashion started as a small subculture and is simply back to being just that. Gyaru is a style that will continue to change and reshape itself, so only time will tell what the style will turn into next. I hope this video helped you learn something about the Gyaru style today. This video is not a complete history, just an overview. So please check out the links in the description box if you would like to learn about anything else more in depth. The style of Gyaru is very complex and difficult to put into one video, so I hope that this explanation is just enough for you to understand the fashion a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much especially to Tia and Miu who helped to provide this video with amazing footage and photos. Please check out the next section in the series which will be covering the different substyles of Gyaru. Bye everyone, I'll talk to you later.